Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Eldridge Ford of Global Evangelistic Ministries. Welcome to another Thirsty Thursday. We're so glad to be here with you tonight. Amen. There is a word from the Lord, and I'm excited about sharing it with you. I'm looking forward to finding myself getting into the word of God with you on this night. I'm appreciative that you would desire to come and join us at this time because uh, this is, we're family, right? Where family is family, and we can find ourselves growing together as family and living as family. Amen. Let's go into a word of prayer and find ourselves getting into the word of God. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you now, giving honor, glory, and praise to your name. Lord, for you are awesome in all your ways. Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would help us to know how to be family in these days, Lord Jesus. Uh, family amongst our blood relatives, Lord God, but family amongst those that we call fellow believers. Lord God, cause us to operate, cause us to care for, cause us to love, cause us to share with one another as those that you've called to be your servants, oh God. God, I pray that the church would find itself rising up, Lord Jesus, to look, act, and do as those that would be judged by the Most High God. And God, I pray, Father God, that you would lead the way, that you would show it, that you would cause it to be seen in our minds, and that we would act it out in our hearts and in our daily living, Father God, we would perform that which you set for us to do. Cause us, Lord God, to live as one family in faith, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. But listen, even now, I, I want to just really get into to the idea of Christian community, amen. There's something about Christian community that is so awesome and so unique uh, that, that uh, I just want to jump into it, amen. Uh, tonight's lesson is, uh, is called Lessons from Journeying Through James. Uh, Journey Through James is a new book that will be uh, out uh, this year, and I'm excited about it. And so I just want to share some insights and kind of leak a little bit, uh, some, some insights of, of God's word. Amen. And uh, I, I want to share from that as well. Amen. Uh, lessons from Journeying Through James. Amen. And I want to talk about Christian community because I believe that Christian community is the way that we're going to find ourselves being able to make it, especially in these times that seem so unsure, uncertain at this time of how things are going and uh, what direction things are going in and and literally uh, the normal now is normal uh, we I think we've pretty much settled in somewhat to so many things amen that we found ourselves that we uh, some things we don't ever want to go back to and some things uh I still seem so much necessary but we have to make sure that we just stay disciplined but some things will never change some things will never change. And God's word is one of those things that will not change. And so therefore, we want to dig into his word and find out how we might live together. Amen. As a body of believers. Amen. Well, let's go into the reading of God's word. I'm going to read for you in your ears from um, James chapter 313. I'm going to read James 313. And then I'm going to read James 3.18, amen? James 3.13 and James 3.18, amen? And what it reads is this. I'm going to be reading from the Message Bible, and it reads like this. Do you want to be counted wise to build a reputation for wisdom? Here's what you do. Live well, live wisely, live humbly. It's the way you live, not the way you talk, that counts. Amen. What a powerful statement. And then, and then uh, James 3, 18 reads like this uh, from the Message Bible. You can develop a healthy, robust community that lives right with God and enjoy its results only if you do the hard work of getting along with each other, treating each other with dignity and honor. Amen. What a powerful statement. Amen. Two powerful statements, right? I, I want to start out with a story. Amen. That, um, that I just want to share a story with you. Uh, the story says that uh, there was a young man. He went and he set out to buy a car. Uh, he was excited, but he was inexperienced uh, about the whole car purchasing uh, process. He was uh, hopeful. Uh, for, for prospects of what he would acquire. And he wanted something that, he, that would suit his personality. And at the same time, he desired for something others would um, admire 
but he wanted something that would fit his budget at the same time. Sounds pretty reasonable, right? Um, he wanted to make sure that it, it, that, that it all bundled up well within his financial need. He wanted to buy the car with only cash, only the cash that he had in hand. And what he did was, is that he wanted to buy the car outright with no payments needed later. Then what he did was he contacted a friend. He was looking for a car. He was trying to figure out what to do. And how many of us have ever done this, that you were looking for a new vehicle and you sought out your friends like, hey, where did you get your car from? And so he contacted a friend. He was like, yo, uh, where did you get your car from? He wanted to buy it outright. He did not want any car notes. He didn't want any financing. He, didn't, he, didn't, he, he wanted to just pay it outright and be done with it. Amen. He then contacted a friend looking for a good deal and seeking the best dealership or place to buy the car so that there would be not any trouble in making his purchase. The time had finally come and he went down to the place to purchase the vehicle and he found the vehicle he wanted within his price range and he was so excited. Now it came time to sit down and negotiate the actual price. But little did the, the, uh, the young man know was, because he was so inexperienced, when he sat down to negotiate the exact price of the car, the salesman was actually negotiating the finance charges. Now, the finance charges is not the actual price of the car, hey, man. I, I want to just make that clear for, for those that have uh, lost me in the story. But I know pretty of you all know already. Finance charges, and it was interesting, and, and, and he was, he was, what, what the salesman was actually um, negotiating was the finance charges, the interest fees uh, he would pay over time for financing this car with the dealership. The entire time, the young man thought he was negotiating the actual price of the car. He thought the price was low for what the, the make and the model was. And he, he, he wondered about it, but he just maybe took it as, maybe this is a blessing. Maybe this is how it works. Uh, maybe because he's here in person that this would be how things would go. Maybe this was a discount or some special deal. He was trying to figure out, but he didn't think too much about it because it seemed like such a good deal. And he did, and he's, and as he began to think about it, his incitement increased. Uh, he found himself smiling at the salesman. The salesman smiled back at him, and they shook hands on it. The young man ran to his pocket for a checkbook, ready to pay in full. The negotiated price that they had set and come to the conclusion on. The salesman leaned over to hand him the keys. He said to the young man, don't bother. Your bill will be in the mail next month. The young man was looking for a one-time payment of what he could afford, but that which he bought would be far greater a commitment and more than he had bargained for. For what he had purchased, he had purchased a car that would have to pay over a period of many months to come and at the cost of 10 times more than he had attended. Only because he was not clear and did not fully understand the details of the deal. Amen? Now, the, the salesman and the young man were working with two different sets. Of, now, now, what was happening was the salesman and the, and the young man, they were working with two different sets of uh, uh, terms or, or information. One uh, was looking for a long-term agreement and the other was looking for a short-term payment in full. But uh, James, he actually deals with something just like this in his book because what happens is, is that in the, in the letter that he writes, the epistle that he writes, because he understands, um, James understood just as those who confessed a life of Christianity sometimes wind up living a life that they never bargained for only because they were not clear on knowing the difference between heavenly wisdom and earthly wisdom. They didn't fully understand the details. So James, he takes this time now to stand up and, and begin to encourage the believers that, listen, if you got the wrong information, with the simple truth of God's word, everything can be made clear. The distinctions can be made between heavenly wisdom and earthly wisdom. Amen? So what James does is he tells the church about two kinds of wisdom that would either bless or hinder the growth of a Christian community. Amen? He, he speaks about the differences between earthly wisdom, earthly and heavenly wisdom, 
And he asked the question 313. What does he ask in 313? He says, who's wise and understanding among you? Then he asks us the question with the appropriate action that would show that individual to be wise. He said, let them show it by their good life, by deeds done and the humility that comes from wisdom. He then warns of the pitfalls that would destroy unity, growth, and stability of the Christian community. And what does he say? James 3.14. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. See, as Christian community, one of the things that we're going to have to do is, is that we're going to have to find ourselves, giving ourselves to, to God's word, that we would find ourselves not living by earthly wisdom. Not just by the things that grandma said and grandpa said, but, but literally living by the word of God. That, that there, there is something that we're not operating with two sets of details. That we don't find ourselves operating with two different sets of information and, and we're seeking for two different outcomes. Because what happens is, is that when we allow God's word to be the standard of our lives, then, then we all find ourselves on the same page. And this is what it will cause Christian community to stand strong, to stand well, and to actually be able to go further in the days ahead. Right now, Christian community is so important. Christian community is so valuable. It is so valid at this time because so many things, so much information is being bombarded towards us. We actually have people that are coming from all walks of life, all uh, educational status, all different places, and they're all sharing information. And there's an over there's an information overload. So much to the point that sometimes we don't have time to truly process what we're taking in. Sometimes to the point that we don't have time to even figure out who we're really listening to. But the Bible is the standard and we want to make sure that we don't find ourselves mixing uh, uh, the, the truths of God's word with, with uh, cliches and clauses and, and, and slogans and, and statements that are made by men, amen, that, that we would find ourselves giving ourselves completely over to the word of God and not just adhering to earthly wisdom. See, the thing about earthly wisdom is, is that there are uh, some things that earthly wisdom provides. And, and earthly wisdom is not bad in itself because there's some things that it, that it does offer. There's, there are times that you can actually um, receive um, wisdom uh, but it, uh, of, of the earthly nature. But James, he actually begins to speak against it, saying that as believers, as a Christian community, you want to find yourself going after the wisdom that comes from above. You want to find yourself dealing with and approaching godly wisdom in every manner, in every uh, opportunity that you have. He says, because earthly wisdom produces pride. Why? Because it's worldly, it's sensual, it's devilish. Then you say, well, well, okay, James, he was writing and he was speaking, but who was he talking to? Well, he was talking to the church at large, for one. He was talking to the church that we don't want to find ourselves mixing uh, God's word with earthly wisdom, with us actually creating comparisons or allowing our experiences to be the only uh, uh, result of what we actually understand. But we would actually find ourselves leaning on the word of truth. Amen. God's word being the outcome. God's word being the standard. God's word being the rule in which we follow. And not giving ourselves over to just things that we've heard or learned or seen. See, it's possible that James was talking to the teachers that he mentioned in James 3, 1. And uh, he, was, he, was, he was talking to those uh, teaching, teachings uh, that, that might have been uh, found to be suitable to the audiences that the audiences wanted to hear. But the church at large, he wanted them to understand, uh, that, to, to encourage them to choose heavenly wisdom. 
that they would actually walk in heavenly wisdom, which heavenly wisdom produces humility. Uh, heavenly wisdom is based uh, uh, in, in, in the, the righteousness of God's word and that they would find uh, themselves overcoming earthly wisdom and the desire for selfish ambition and conceit and self-centeredness. See, the, the, the community of faith or the community, the Christian community, we're to be lovers of one another and to see one another greater than we see ourselves. And we're to, to look out to actually help one another in ways that to make sure that all is well. We're to help restore the trust of men back into the arms of God. To help men get back to the desire of actually seeing God as God Almighty. Oftentimes, we, lately, we see that people are, have so many other options. We have too many options. We have so many great options besides the Word of God. And sometimes um, people put the Word of God as the last option. And sometimes it's not even an option at all even for believers. What we want to do is we want to find ourselves, giving ourselves completely over to allowing God's word to be the guidance, to help to lead in our lives. See, some of the, some of the people that were hearing what, what uh, James was speaking on, uh, uh, basically they had harbored sinful attitudes such as envy and selfish ambition in their hearts. Even now as believers in the church of God, that, 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 that as, we, as we're growing together, we want to make sure that we continue to humble ourselves, to not compare ourselves one to another, to our brothers and our sisters in Christ, to, to say what they have and what we don't have. We're not, we're not to actually envy or to find ourselves uh, waiting for someone to lose their position or lose their place in order for us to step up. But that we're to love our brothers and our sisters of a pure heart with the wisdom that comes from above. You see, sometimes what, what causes there to be friction or not to allow Christian community to work as, as it should is, is arrogant attitudes. Acting out with selfish ambition. Being zealous. And giving our own interpretation of God's word instead of studying it out. Instead of being patient and humble to learn what it really says. Sometimes we're always searching for new revelation. But the encouragement here is, is to study the word, learn what is this, what is it is saying and obey it. Challenge yourself to to go beyond being self-serving. And to humble yourselves. And you would find it easy to live with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Not always fighting, not always uh, uh, finding fault or, or actually feeling uh, less than, but literally standing with confidence and boldness and courage to know that, that, that what is in them is also in you because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. That as a body of believers, we can walk together in agreement. We can walk together in fellowship. Acknowledging and knowing that God is with us and God is for us. We want to find ourselves studying God's word and understanding what it says and obeying it fully. But we also want to find ourselves knowing God's word to the point that we recognize false wisdom. And that we confront the teachings of teachers whose doctrine is deeply rooted in earthly wisdom. And that we do not allow ourselves to allow our brothers to go on learning of these things. That we would alert, alert ourselves and our fellow believers to be careful of these wayward beliefs. That oftentimes I claim to be the gospel. 
See, false wisdom can be pretty convincing if you find yourself listening long enough. False wisdom is attracted to the fallen nature of man. And false wisdom is only focused on what we gain for ourselves alone. False wisdom neglects focusing on God's praise and caring for others because false wisdom in itself is self-centered. But this is what destroys Christian communities. James, he tells us, he says, he says this in verse 17, he says, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peaceable, considerate, submissive and full of mercy and good fruit. It's impartial and sincere. See, heavenly wisdom produces humility. It causes us to actually experience wise conduct. It causes us to, 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 to see wisdom, that wisdom that comes from above. It's pure. It's peaceable. It offers gentleness. If we're going to find ourselves operating as a community of believers, humility is necessary. Sometimes we meet people and their personalities are large and sometimes we feel small in how we present ourselves. We're not to quietly resent one another because we've been made differently, but we're to actually admire and to encourage and to, to, to actually look well upon one another because why? We're on the same team. We're a body of believers. We're serving the same Lord. We're serving the same God. We actually have the same mission, the same purpose. Humility is a key characteristic of a person following godly wisdom. That a person that is following godly wisdom, a person that desires to keep the Christian community together, you'll know them by their attributes. How they respond, how they look, and how they handle the affairs and the things that they deal with concerning the world. It does not mean that, uh, humility does not mean that you're shy and your, your head is put down and you confess upon yourself that you are nothing. But, but the Lord, he, he, he encourages us to come boldly before his throne of grace. And the apostle Paul, when he was preaching, he said, pray that I would uh, speak boldly. That as believers, we would have confidence for more than just ourselves, but even for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We would have enough encouragement to, to spear on and to, 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 to encourage our brothers and sisters in Christ to continue in the faith. Christian community is, is God's idea. Christian community is God's plan. See, Christians, when we practice humility in our relationships with others, we then see a culture of humility amongst believers. Amen? See, one of the things that you'll begin to see when you begin to see Christian community walking and moving forward in the things of God is, is you're going to see that there is an ongoing commitment to peace. There's going to be an ongoing commitment to peace, right? And, and this peace, it, it's going to bring about the wisdom of God. It's going to bring about the, the outcomes necessary because the, the, the anger of man does not produce the glory of God. James 3, 17 through 18 in the ESV says this. It says, but the wisdom from above is first pure then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of good mercy, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Amen. What we begin to see is, is that, that, uh, uh, Peace is an internal, Dr. Michael Reynolds said that, that uh, this peace 
Uh, peace comes out of internal righteousness. Living right with God causes inner peace. But when you're living right with God and you have inner peace with yourself, then you are able to have peace with others. Because Dr. Michael Reynolds, he says, he says, he says, peace comes out of internal righteousness. Living right with God causes inner peace. He says, if you have a lot of trouble with others, you are not right with God. Peace with God causes peace with others. I, I want to encourage somebody. I don't want to tell somebody that you're not a believer. I don't want to tell somebody that you're, that you're not in right standing with God. But what I do want to encourage you to do is, is to, to actually find yourself going back to God's word. Studying his word. Learning what it says. And, 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 and obeying his word. Begin to look at your brothers and sisters in the right manner. That you would see them in the right way. And, and therefore you would actually experience the peace of God that comes. With us living together as a body of believers. We want to find ourselves that, that, we, that, we, that we commit to peace that even when our brothers and sisters, when, when they do not respond the way that we desire, when they do not act out in the way that we want, to, want them to respond, then, then what happens is the Bible tells us that we're to endure the brethren. Why would he tell us to endure the brethren if there was no need? There would not be any differences. But we recognize that we still are one body of one faith, of one Lord, of one spirit. And Christ is the head of the body. And we don't want to be disconnected. Any form, shape, or fashion. We want to be connected to the body of Christ. I want to encourage us to, to, to find ourselves moving towards actually living in Christian community with others. I want to find ourselves, that we will find ourselves giving ourselves over completely to allowing others to speak into our lives. You, you know, I, what I found is, is that people don't have much problem when people are telling you good things about yourself and how well you're doing and, and, and validating and patting you on your back and high five you and telling you great job and, and applauding you for your efforts. But Christian community is so much more than that. Because Christian community allows us to come into a position to learn where others can say, hey, there's some things that you're working on and they're not looking like the word. They're not sounding like the word. There's some things that you're taking in and they don't seem so well. Because they seem to go against the word of God. See, what it is, is as believers, we set the word of God at the highest standard. That no matter what others say, no matter what others believe, no matter what our experiences tell us, God's word is the highest standard in which we live to. And we're to live as a body. Could you imagine my finger telling my ear that you don't know what's going on? Oh, that would be terrible because they do two different things. And so even though they're not 100% the same, they don't actually function in the same way, they're still part of the same body. We must learn to live together as those that are part of the body of Christ. I want to encourage us today to, to find ourselves connecting ourselves with the body of Christ. I, I know that it's easy. It's amazing. I, I found myself on Facebook one day and I, I saw all the preachers that were, that were in my listing and I was able to, 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 to flick them on and see what they were saying. And I could flick them off just as fast. Oh, I don't like his hair today. Oh, I don't like the song that they're playing. Oh, I don't like the first few words that they said. And I was cutting them off just as fast as I was cutting them on. We're living in a time where we have so much choice. We make so many decisions. And as a body of believers, we want to find ourselves coming to a place and planting ourselves like the tree that is planted by the rivers of water. That we would find our, our roots growing deep and strong. 
and that we would not be moved. We would find ourselves stable, right? Like Psalms 1. We want to find ourselves positioned in a way that when trouble comes, when the winds of life blow, it's a body of believers. We won't be blown down. We won't be blown away. We won't be uprooted. We'll find ourselves steadfast, unmovable, unshakable because we're part of the body of Christ. I want to encourage us to find ourselves, giving ourselves over completely and totally to the idea of actually living together in unity. Living together in agreement. Living together in Christian community. Have, have you noticed that, that even now the Christians, they're battling one another like the rappers? They're battling whose doctrine is best and who knows most. And uh, uh, there are so many things that they're putting out there. And, and they, 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 so many people are being exposed and, and all these other things. And, 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 and people are loving it. A million views. A three-minute clip in two weeks. And when the truth of God's word is going forth, it's hard to hear. As a matter of fact, it's hardly unheard of. We, we need to learn to live together. How can we walk together? Except we first agree. I want to encourage you to find yourself joining a body of believers. Being encouraged by a pastor. One that you've sought out. One that you've, you've prayed about. One, one that you, you're seeking God and saying, God, I need to know. I want more. And I want to grow. You don't have to wander around. And you don't have to be lost in the shuffle of the swipes and the likes and the shares and the following. Get with somebody that can touch you. When I say touch you, they can touch you as far as being able to stay in contact with you. To pray with you. To encourage you. Christian community is necessary. The reason it is, is because God said so. Even now, I believe that there are those under the sound of my voice that you may have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Even at this time, I, I come before you as one that needs Christian community, that I live for Christian community. Even now as a pastor, I set myself in positions where I can actually grow and learn from others. Fellowship, friendship, care. Even sometimes people just being concerned about you and your well-being. I want to encourage somebody that has not given their life to Christ that today you would actually ask Jesus to come into your heart. Because that is the greatest gift. That is the greatest blessing that you can receive. Will you pray this prayer with me? I believe that when you pray this prayer, the Lord is going to speak to your heart. He's going to turn your life around. And you're going to find yourself experiencing life in a whole new way. Amen? Come on, let's pray. Please repeat after me. Lord Jesus, please forgive me of all my sins. Lord, I believe that you died and rose again. Lord, save me. I receive my salvation 
now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Even now, I'm going to pray another prayer with you for those that have just prayed that prayer. Because I believe your life will never be the same. Heavenly Father, we thank you so dearly, Lord. God, that you don't leave anybody out. God, it's not your will that any should perish, Lord God, but the gift that you give is eternal life, Father. So God, God, I pray, Lord Jesus, for those that have just prayed that prayer just now, you're going to actually begin to send those around and send laborers and send help, send uh, that which is needed, oh God, to draw them nearer unto you, oh God, and cause them to know you in a better way. God, allow them to be discipled, oh God. And God, I pray that you will protect them from any false doctrine or, or, or false teachings or things that would draw them away, oh God. But God, I pray that you would not allow them to go back to what they come out from. That you would not allow them to remain where they are. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would move them by your spirit. Know the true sincere wisdom of your word. I thank you now, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I give honor, glory, and praise to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Now, one of the things that I recognize is, is that, listen, if you prayed that prayer, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. And listen, I can't do nothing but get with them. Oh, I get squirmy in my seat. And all I can say is, all heaven rejoice. All heaven rejoice. All heaven rejoice. All heaven rejoice. Hallelujah. 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 All heaven rejoice. Listen, two things I encourage you over and over again. Listen, I got a different one on the table today. But first thing I want to encourage you to do is get you a Bible. Hallelujah. Get you a Bible. I want you to get you a Bible. You, I want you to begin to read God's word. Take it in. Oh, a brother was telling me the other day how he was reading the chapters in the Bible and, and how it was getting good to him and, and that he was making time and he was scheduling out his time to study God's word. And just read through it. Amen. And that, that before he shared with anybody else, he wanted to know it for himself. Oh, what a powerful testimony. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah for that brother. Amen. And I, I just want to encourage you to be like him, be like you, and allow the Lord to begin to help you to take in his word and begin to read it. Amen. There's so many versions that you can learn from and read from. Amen. And then secondly, I want to encourage you, listen, you can listen to the word. Oh, it is so good. It's so good to your ears. Amen. You can begin to take it in. I've heard another brother say that every night before he goes to sleep, he actually cuts on the word of God. That while he's laying there resting, the word of God plays his ear so that he can take it in oh while he's resting amen thank you jesus hallelujah what a powerful thing amen amen and i want to encourage you to begin to take in god's word begin to listen to it and allow it to just to, to wash you on the inside there's something about god's word it's a cleanser amen and then secondly i want to encourage you don't do it alone you don't gotta do it by yourself amen i want to encourage you to get with somebody Amen. You can get with us. Amen. Uh, go go like us on Facebook at Glo Gym Church Chicago, Global Evangelistic Ministries. Listen, go like us. Go send us a, uh, a message so we can get back with you and talk to you about it. We want to encourage you in your faith. Amen. I'm looking forward to actually uh, contacting and meeting with you. Amen. And then you can go to Gym Church Chicago, Gym Church Chicago. Amen. That is actually our website, gymchurchchicago.org. That's our website. You can find your way there and literally we want to connect with you send us an email send us something that we can actually connect back with you i want to say god bless you and keep you may god continue to keep his face shining upon you i look forward to being with you again listen join us tomorrow we'll be back at 12 15 saturday mornings we'll be back again for throwback saturdays and then we'll find ourselves throughout the week with sunshine break at 12 15 god bless you and keep you and continue to cause his face to shine upon you until next time